that's kind of a new morph that, well, it's not really new, but they're just coming more into the U.S. right now. Uh, this is a golden eye, which a lot of people have seen now because of the uh, super form, is known as a magpie. It's a pure white blood python, and then they got a black diamond on their throat, kind of the black eye stripes going on, and then black splotches down the backs. Really super reduced patterning, like kind of like if you just took the head and then wiped the rest of it white and then made like little black dots all over it, like big black splotches, kind of like a Rorschach type deal. These are called ivory blood pythons. They kind of start out with that yellowy color to them, and as they mature, you can see this one's starting to gain in the white. They turn into like a pure white snake with a bunch of black speckling going down the back. Um, and they're actually a super form of this type of snake right here. This is known as a matrix blood python. And you can see it's kind of got like blocky patterning going on down the back and in the sides. And when you breed two of those together, one, fourth, or one out of four babies should be an ivory. And you can see that's an ivory compared to a golden eye. And that's from Chris McCarr from Giant Keepers. Uh, this is a new type of uh, blood that they're working with, uh, Reptile Battalion is working with. Uh, it's a tiger blood python. They're usually characterized by uh, banding a lot in the back and then also the really heavy black outlining along the patterning. And then uh, those are pretty new. They're just producing. They just hatched out a few of them this year. And VPI is the only other people I know that have the other tigers around. And like I was saying, this is the ivory. And then Nick Bottini of Cold Blooded Earth last year, I want to say, or this year, produced a albino, so that's a T-positive albino, or a caramel albino ivory. Um, and this is just a comparison. You can see uh, when they're young, this is the T-positive albino up top, these two, and then the bottom one is the T-negative albino. And both these are from Jason Chapman. He's got T-negatives and T-positives. But as the T-positives mature, they usually get a lot of uh, the red coloration. Uh, is what is generally bred for. Some of them turn out a little bit more looking like the babies where it's not really high contrast. Um, but most of the teen eggs that are produced produce this crazy red and white, crazy white looking animal. Um, and VPI actually has uh, a line that is low contrast that is just like a pale coloration on them. But generally right now, most people are seeing these high contrast ones available at the moment. And then the T-positive albinos, uh, this one's from the blood cell or Karen Ryan Norris. And they produce these really nice, rich, high contrast ones that are just really rich red coloration. All right, and now I'm going to talk about the Sumatran short tails, which are, they don't really have as many morphs. They only got like one or two morphs going on right now. But they're still, we're producing, starting to produce crazy black, like almost solid black animals. If you see them, uh, generally what people are looking for when they're breeding them together is this really dark black coloration. And then the, generally they have a orange or like a dark brown eye. So you get a really cool contrast when you get a solid black snake with a pumpkin orange eye. So uh, Kara and Ryan over at the blood cell have been line breeding theirs for several years now. And this is one that they had hatched out, I want to say last year, um, basically born black. Generally when they're babies, they're more of this silver color. Like you can see this one's a little bit more silver and it's got not as much black on it. Uh, and then as they get older, this one's a little bit older, probably about a year old, they start to gain that black that starts covering the whole body and then they get almost pitch black when they're adults. And um, there's also another variation. This one right here is actually, you can see it's got kind of like a lighter colored head than most of the rest of them that you see. Those are called chrome heads. It's not really genetically different. Uh, I mean, it's genetically different, but it's not considered a morph. Generally, they don't get as black as some of the other short-tailed pythons, uh, but they do tend a lot to keep a lot of the contrast and the silvers in them. And that head will generally stay a little bit like dark on most occasions, and then it'll really flatten them out, like it'll turn a bright, so like you can open the cage and you can see like almost glows in the dark how bright their heads will turn. Um, and they usually only do that like two or three times a month, but you, when you see it, it's just amazing. And you can see this is a chrome head that's a little bit older, that one's from Jason Chapman. And this one is actually reverse stripes, so you can see that it's got no patterning really on the back. Um, people are still working with those, they're trying to produce more that are kind of like it. 
And there's also another one called like a pinstripe. They got like kind of like the super stripe Borneos, but they're the blacks. And supposedly, I haven't seen pictures of the super form, but supposedly they have a solid black, no patterning animal that is produced from it. Haven't seen it yet, but that is what I hear going around is what they produce. Um, and then the other type of uh, Sumatra short tail is one that's separated by uh, a mountain range in the, I want to say the northwest. Uh, these are the peach-headed Sumatrans, so they look a little bit like the Borneos. You can see that they've got that peach-colored head, and they got the kind of silvery patterning. Um, but this is generally what they end up looking like as adults, kind of that black, black, black body and light peach-colored head. They would not have any subocular scales, and then the scale counts should be a little bit less um, if you're looking at some of the other snakes. And then this is actually a caramel albino. That's uh, Nick Botini's from Cold Blooded Earth. Uh, he's one of the only people in the U.S. working with them right now other than VPI. And they are, uh, they're just starting to get out there right now, but they get a lot of the, like, keep a lot of the contrast, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, they keep that peach-colored head, and they get a lot of the contrast in the body. They really turn into a really cool-looking snake as an adult. And this is one that hasn't really been proven yet. Uh, this is a peach-headed Sumatran, and they want, are calling that the anaconda phase. Uh, lots of thick, thick uh, silver in the patterning, and then uh, kind of reduce, and they also have a little bit of speckling you know, along the sides, kind of like the granite Borneos. Um, but just really cool snakes that we're just starting to see coming in now because there's more captive breeding going on. And I just want to thank some of the people that I've used for inspiration and have helped me with information, just Karen Ryan Norris, Nick Botini, Matt Minitola, Jason Chapman, Chris Makara, Chris Kopecki, Timothy Mead, uh, Rich Crowley, Long Di Lon Dietzler, uh, Reptile Battalion, Matt Doolin, and some of the other people that have shared information with me because getting information is difficult, but when you can share it with people, I think that's the most important thing. Because um, getting into the hobby and getting into snakes was a lot more difficult when people were like, oh, you're 14, you don't know what you're doing. Uh, when you start telling people information and giving them proper ways to take care of animals and showing them that they're, maybe they thought about it wrong or there's something that's changed in the past few years about the animals and being able to share that, I think it's really important. So if you guys have any questions at all, feel free to ask, but hope you guys enjoy the presentation. If anyone has any questions on blood or short tails, I'm happy to answer, yeah. What's the average age that you can start breeding? Start breeding, generally females, it's more of the size issue than the age, but generally th the three-year-old females can go. Um, this girl bred this year, but she actually did produce. Um, it's like bad. Yeah. They tend to be really noisy when you handle them, but they generally are just all huff and puff. This girl bred this year, she's about seven pounds. Uh, that's generally the smallest you ever want to breed them, seven pounds in three years. Um, for females, and then males can breed at 18 months. This is a male right here, and he bred this year, and the female is grabbed right now. Okay. I'm waiting on eggs from her, um, probably in the next 10 to 20 days. What's the average amount of eggs that um, It really depends on the species. Uh, Borneo short tails lay the most amount of eggs. They generally have smaller eggs, but they usually lay the most amount of eggs. They'll range anywhere from 10 eggs to the record, I want to say, is 40. Two forty between wow. forty-two and forty-six eggs, so you have a lot of eggs. But then the blood pythons, the red blood pythons, they will actually lay fewer eggs but larger eggs. So you get bigger hatchlings, fewer eggs. They usually lay between eight and twenty eggs at a time. And then the Sumatra short tails will have more eggs, usually a little bit less than the Borneos. Wow. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sure. I like it. They seem like um, like couch potato or lap, you know, like lap cat. Yeah, no, uh, my friend was doing a homophobia series for art, so I had a bunch of them laying on me for reference pictures. Yeah. They are, they are, it is, it's moving, living art. These and I was like, oh, she's so big. She's like, she's one of the friendliest ones I have. Like, put her on you. She's really heavy, so as long as you can do it there, you know, putting some weight on you, you're fine. No, these guys are beautiful. They've grown on me. Like, before Rob, I knew nothing. Yeah, right. And now, like, it's like, it's poisonous. Like, it's like, it's like the biggest pet peeve now.